busting heads. Spring Thunder is brought to you by Realtree, Woodhaven Custom Calls, Huntera, Federal Premium Ammunition, Bog Pod, the National Wild Turkey Federation, and Cabela's. He's coming right here. I see him through the seat. Get ready. about that? this head out right here. We're out here patterning our shotguns today. Uh, weather's been real nice. We're gonna have an early spring up here in the Midwest and across most of the country. Turkeys are starting to gobble a little bit and uh, it's a great time to get your calls out, get to scouting, and patterning your guns like we're doing today. But I've got three different weapons today. My 870, um, John's Vanelli 12 gauge, and then Zach's 20 gauge 870. And uh, we're shooting different loads out of all three of them, trying to, uh, to get our sights tuned up for the season. But I've already fired John's Benelli and my 870 with the third degree, and both of them look to be dead on at about 20 yards. But Zach has never shot this load out of his gun before. So we're gonna show you the process that we use in trying to determine his effective range. Right there, yeah, got it, yeah. Well, we got the 20 gauge here. We're gonna put it in the lead sled. Uh, we got the target out at about 20 yards. And the first thing that we're looking for is making sure that the shot and the bead are centered. And when we're trying to find this effective range, we're looking for eight to 10 pellets in the head. So we're gonna just keep moving out from 20 yards until we don't reach that. And that's gonna be the outer limit of my effective range. These little orange peel targets from Caldwell are really slick because, as you can tell, it shows you where all your lethal hits are inside of that head which is you know, really important for what we're trying to do today in determining effective range. As you can see from that first shot, Zach's got 40 pellets in that head probably, and uh, visible by those yellow dots where the shot impacts the head on that turkey. 30. 30. 38, 39, yeah, 40. Right, right about 40 at the redneck yardage adjustment. <laughs> That was our shot at about 40, 45 yards. And we've got about 10 to 12 pellets in the center of the neck here. Our original goal was to shoot until we had eight to 10 pellets in the head, but I would say this is probably gonna be our effective range. That's what we figured for this gun. Really don't wanna shoot much over uh, 40 yards with the 20 gauge, but feeling pretty good about these Federal third degree loads. This is my first time shooting them and they shot great out of my 20 gauge. I'll give you a brief overview of the products that we're using for patterning today. Always have hearing protection. These are some Caldwell noise canceling headphones. I've already touched on the orange peel targets. They're very handy for this, cheap, easy to stick on in between shots. And the most important product that we've got here is our lead sled. Whenever it comes to patterning turkey guns, especially if you're trying a bunch of different chokes and different loads, it's really gonna take a toll on your shoulder over time if you're trying to get all this done in one day especially. So the real handy thing with this lead sled is you can just lock your gun in there, 
get it pointed downrange dead at the target and you can shoot over and over and over again it's not gonna wear you down and it's especially handy if you're trying to side in uh, scopes or red dots but now that we've got all our turkey guns sided in we're gonna move on to an actual hunting scenario that we encounter in the woods all the time and that is seeing what our patterns do when we try shooting through brush killed a lot of turkeys at close range blowing through a ton of stuff but once you get out there at those longer ranges like 30 and 40 yards it really affects your pattern and may cause you to miss a lot of birds so that being said we're going to join greg clements on a hunt that he had out in nebraska last year where he encountered one of these exact scenarios well it's the morning of may 20th I got a couple hours to hunt this morning. I thought it'd be fun to get out and do, uh, you know, something I normally don't do on this property, and that is uh, hunt with a shotgun. And then also, I just normally don't hunt this late in the season. Anyways, I'm set up on the north end of this property where the birds like to congregate and feed out in the middle of this uh, agricultural field. There's a waterway that divides the, the corn and the bean field, and that's right where I'm sitting. I've got birds gobbling about 150, 200 yards away. And I have no doubt that they're going to work their way down into this field. So I'm excited to see what happens this morning. There's a bunch of gobblers back up in the timber. It mostly sounds like Jake's, but there's at least one Tom in there. Hopefully he'll come out and come down to the decoys. Uh, yesterday I, I came out just to see what was out here quick out in this field and saw five different toms and they're using the north part of this property and uh, it uh, kind of played into the strategy that I, I wanted to use this morning and that was hunting out of this waterway that divides the, this big agricultural field and he came right into the challenge the, uh, the half strut Jake as you can tell by the pattern you know it, it, it clobbered his head good but it also hit him you know a little bit lower and shaved off a little bit of his beard and the interesting thing is he actually doesn't have any spurs. The bird I shot last year didn't have spurs either, so uh, possibly a genetic trait in this area. Beautiful bird nonetheless. Exciting morning to be out. Great way to end the season. As you can see from Greg's hunt there, when you really slow the footage down, his shot hits a bunch of those corn stalks and stuff in between him and the bird, and it actually deflects. He hits the bird high in the back and kills him fine, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually try to recreate that scenario. I've got a bunch of brush in between me and that target out there. It's about 20 yards or so away. But this is something that we encounter all the time in the, in the turkey woods. I've missed birds. I actually missed one a couple of years ago on public land um, at about 40 yards. As you can tell in this footage, I blow through a bunch of brush right at the muzzle of my gun and I'm sure that has an impact on that shot downrange. But what we're trying to determine here is how far out we can effectively shoot through brush. So right now we've got one at 20, we're gonna shoot it here, then we're gonna set up in a little different scenario and place the target out there a little bit further. Well, at that range, we don't have to worry much about brush, it doesn't look like the wad might have actually still hit the target. So at 20 yards, it plowed through all that stuff and hit him dead center. Now, the question is, will it do the same thing at 40 yards? Didn't get very many in there at all. It looked like I sawed plenty of stuff out too. What is there, one, two, maybe about eight? About eight, yeah. Yeah. That's 35 yards shooting through brush, and we've got around eight pellets in the head and neck, which is probably gonna kill that turkey, but um, way, way different than what we were doing while I'll go off the lead sled in the wide open. 
you know, Zach's 20 gauge was reaching clear out to 40 yards with more pellets in the head than this. But that's my 12 gauge at 30 through brush. You can definitely tell that it's impacting that, uh, that shot down range. This is an advantage to shooting three and a half inch shells right here, you know. I mean, uh, if you're shooting a 20 gauge like yours or like my 12 gauge with three inch shells, you really got to be conscious of this. I mean, I miss birds at 35, 40 yards. And I think this is one of the main reasons why is because you're shooting through brush and you don't have all that shot. So if you have a three and a half inch shell, you can probably get away with more shots like this at 35, 40 yards. That being said though, I mean, it's good to, to practice this scenario in the field. This is something that you're gonna constantly run into um, is shot opportunities like this in the woods where you got brush or obstructions in between you and the bird. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. I can already feel myself getting a little shiner here <laughs> from one of those shots that we took a while ago through brush. That's another good reason to use that lead sled when you're trying to pattern for turkey season. It takes a lot of this out of the equation, but uh, we've got some exciting stuff coming up for you here on the website. We're going to be heading to Mississippi actually in just a couple more days and uh, there's going to be video blogs on the site starting around March 14th or 15th. So be watching for those. We're going to try to bring you these every single day while we're on our uh, public land turkey trip across the south. So keep up on those video blogs. We're getting ready to leave here in a few days. I'm excited to finally get in the turkey woods. But if you're not already a member of the NWTF, please go and click on the link in the corner of our screen. Go over to their page and become one. But thanks once again for joining us. We'll see you next Monday for the next episode of Spring Thunder. Inside for your turkey trip? You better believe it, brother. Yeah.